Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video we continue talking about actors uh, in the original Scala actor library and we're going to talk about the receive method. So previously we wrote our first test for actors. Uh, we had a main in here and inside of that main we made an actor. We made it explicitly and we gave it an act method and then we showed how when we started it it would start doing something and the main method would keep going. But the whole point of the actor model is the stuff that we can do with this actor and how we can send it uh, messages. And that's how we're supposed to interact with our actors instead of calling methods. In this case, I don't send it anything, it just starts and it does whatever it was supposed to do. I don't have any input into that. So we want to talk about the receive method, uh, that is one of the two methods that's inside of actor that is used to basically receive messages. And so you can see from the signature of receive, it takes a partial function. And that partial function is going to include cases that handle whatever types of things it is that we want uh, to, as far as the, the messages that we want our actor to be able to handle. So we'll start off, we will write a simple actor here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and kill all the code that we have there. I'm going to move our simple actor outside of the main. Give it an act method. And inside of this act method, I want to say that we are going to receive, except I will spell it correctly. Uh, a case, I'm just going to write two cases here to start with. One is a string and the other is an int. Okay. And if it receives a string, I want it to print line got a string and print out that string. Oops, I just called it S, not str. And then if we get an integer, uh, we can say okay, uh, print out something about that, that number. So down inside of our main, I want to instantiate a simple actor. And then I want to start it, because if you don't start your actors, they don't do anything. And now I want to send it some messages. So we'll say uh, SA, uh, we send messages using the bang syntax. Uh, this was actually adopted from the Erlang language, which is a functional language, it's completely actor based, and it uses the exclamation point for sending messages. So. We'll go ahead and send it a string that says first message. Uh, sure. And then we will send it the number five. Okay. So that's our first simple test. And we run this and see what it does. Well, it says got a string, first message, and then it terminated. Okay. Why was that? Well, it turns out that the act method, when the act method stops, the actor uh, basically dies and receive is basically we called it once here so we it comes in to receive and it blocks and waits for a message as the first message that it got was this string so it executes this case but then it drops out of the receive and we're done so if I want this to happen multiple times so that it can get say two messages I need to put this inside of a loop and I'll start off by putting this inside of an infinite loop And we'll see the implications of that here in just a second. And now I run this again. And let's make our output window a little bit larger. Got a string first message, got a number, uh, and it's five. So that's kind of what we were expecting to have happen. There's one minor problem here. The actor's still sitting there waiting, and it's keeping our program alive. And so our program hasn't terminated. Um, there are other problems with, with doing things this way. 
Uh, turns out that sending strings and ints as your messages is really not ideal. This is not how you should be sending, uh, this is not, these are not the types that you should use because there are lots of different strings, there are lots of different ints. Um, to, to illustrate this, let's start off with, and so I guess in some ways I'll illustrate one of the problems with strings. We're going to go ahead and make it so that this can terminate. So we're going to create a variable for uh, called a flag, and then while flag is true, this will run. And we need to have a case in here to make it quit. So I'm going to put this case in here and flag equals false. And so down here, I whoops, send it the string quit. And we run. And what happened? Well, it says got a string first message. The number is five, got a string quit, but it didn't quit. Well, why not? Well, because partial functions go through their cases in order. Turns out this is unreachable code because this uh, quit is a string that will be hit here. Um, so I can make it so it would actually be picked up if I do it there. And this will now behave the way that I want it to and that it prints the first message, uh, then it gets the number, and notice that it did terminate uh, and did not print out quit. What happens though if I have a typo in my string? Well, now we go back to that old behavior. Uh, so one of the reasons why you don't want to use uh, strings in particular, and especially different formats of strings here, is that you don't want it so that typos in your strings, which are, this compiles, it runs, uh, we would rather have this be a syntax error if I'm going to mess something up. But we do want to make it so that in general our messages are immutable. And because in, when actors are passing back and forth messages, you have to realize that anything that's passed inside of a message is basically accessible to two actors. So the easiest way to make sure that you don't have two actors dealing with mutable memory is to make sure that all of the messages you're sending back and forth are immutable. If you violate that, you just have to be extra careful in uh, making sure that only one of the actors is dealing with that memory. Now the string is immutable and the int is immutable, so we haven't broken that rule. But I want something that actually has a, a type that has the meaning for what we want to do. And the way we normally make our immutable types was with case classes. Now in this case, quit isn't going to take any arguments. So instead of making a case class, I'm going to make a case object, and I'm going to call it quit. And so then this case here will be quit, and down here I'm going to send it quit. Whoops, I put that inside of the actor. That's a scoping error. Okay. Notice now if I miscapitalize things, I get a syntax error on that, and that is a behavior that I would like to have. Um, okay, so now we can see that uh, we pass this this in, and, and it does what we want. Ideally for these, we would create some other case classes. Something like this. and then make it so that instead of passing in, uh, instead of doing patterns on just a string and just an int, I would do patterns on my case classes. Note that I'm actually using the pattern matching capabilities of my case class. I say this is a message, and then I bind the variable s so that it does what we were doing before. I don't have to specify that s is a string because it knows that from up here and it knows the type message. And so now when I send these things in, I can do that. Of course, the additional advantage is I could have another case class that takes just a single int and it could have a different meaning and go to a different case. If I run this, it does what we want. And this is how our messages kind of should be passed. So I'm gonna stop this video here. We'll come back in the next video. We'll continue looking at uh, at actors and at receive, and we'll actually make two actors that interact with one another and send messages back and forth.